With Chesapeake Bay gleaming in the distance, we are inside M&T Bank Stadium near the Inner Harbor in Baltimore, Maryland. Straight ahead, we've got a pretty good one on tap here as it'll be the Houston Texans taking on the Baltimore Ravens. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. And now out comes Houston. Play action. Stroud now. He'll get this into the hands of Nico Collins. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. 19 yards right off the bat. And a quick first down. Play action here on the first play from scrimmage. They want to see how the linebackers are going to react. Are they looking to stop the run? Are they going to sit back in coverage? A really nice job there of going in attack mode early. And they pick up a quick first down. And he edges forward, but only gets a pair of yards out of it. And it's second down. They suspected it was a power play up the middle coming at him. And boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. Second down and eight. Singletary again. And not much there at all. Maybe a yard up to the 43. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. The Ravens bring out an extra defensive back here on third. And Stroud now to throw. And the throw there going to be incomplete. One first down here, and that's all, folks. Good work by this defense to hold things in check and force a punting situation. Not fourth down. Here's Cameron Johnston on to punt for Houston. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. The Baltimore is offense set for this next possession. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at the 20. The drive starts with a carry by Edwards. And he will lose yardage on the play back at his own 19-yard line. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. On the option right is Jackson. He'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. A little do-it-yourself run right there and a nice game. And I like that he knew that that was about all he was going to get. So he did a nice job of protecting himself, took care of the football, took what the defense gave him. If they continue to allow him to do that, they'll find their way taking what they can all the way to the end zone. Now it's Jackson. Able to find the open man. That's complete. Still on his feet. Rashad Bateman. And Touchdown! Rashad Bateman, 75 yards. And the Ravens will jump on top with the game's first score here this afternoon. Justin Tucker for the extra point. And the Ravens lead at 7-0.
kick it away following the touchdown. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. So now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. And they'll throw it with Stroud here, first and 10. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. But that's a defense coordinator's got to be happy with that result. They took away all options downfield and forced the incompletion. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. A give up the middle to Singletary. Powerful running. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. But this play sequence was really kind of called in reverse. Incomplete pass on first and 10. Nice run on second and 10 when probably everyone was expecting them to throw the football. Now if you're the defense, what are they going to do on third down? You're a little off balance. They'll try and run for this with Singletary. And he's going to be a yard short. Needed two, but only got one. Fourth down. Fourth and short, partner. I mean, this would be a really risky call. Here we are in the first quarter. On They're your own side of the field. side of the field. But, boy, what a tone setter that would be to go for it and get it, wouldn't it? You're gritty today. I like I'm, it. I'm feeling it. On fourth down, out is the putter. Cameron Johnston to boot it away. Fair catch called. It's taken in right at the 20-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Ravens, they'll take over. They'll run with Edwards here to begin the drive. And he'll power ahead, but only for about three yards. Second down coming up. It may be only a gain of three yards, but that back, he deserves a lot more credit on the play. That could have easily been stopped at the line, but his vision and his determination found some space to turn it into that modest gain. On second down, here's a keeper by the QB. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. And that one will go for 13 yards on the keeper. And a first down. And this, I mean, it's certainly something to watch out for. He is not afraid to call his own number on plays like that. And here he takes it for good yardage. And we know this defense prepared all week for this, but sometimes when you see it in person, it's a whole different ball game. And all that preparation, it goes right out the window. Edwards now on first and 10. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. That run right there was an offensive line coach's dream, wasn't it? Guys picked up all of their assignments, created a nice gap for the running back to get through. Pick up seven yards. Yeah, he's probably chortling on the headset right now, saying, we got it going, boys. Let's keep it going. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. Jackson, options out left. And holding it, maybe the wrong decision as he stopped in the backfield. That's a big loss of three, and it brings up third down. Well, sometimes that option can get bogged down before the gears really even get into motion, and I think that's what we saw there. And I think what he saw, he saw a defensive end right in his face because he looked up, and he was right there. Didn't even have a chance to get going. Now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. Now that's a good bounce back after giving up a touchdown on the opening drive. Just one first down permitted and then out. Obviously no loss of confidence with that defense, and now they get to turn it back to their offense. Facing fourth down, Baltimore will punt. Jordan Stout out there. Desmond King deep for Houston. Fair catch called for right around the 11-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Texans are going to have the football with a first and 10 deep in their own territory.
Now they'll go play action here with Stroud. Try to drop one in, but it's incomplete. I tell you what, that's a bedroom throw from a guy in his first season in the NFL. A lot of rookies are trying to force something there. He thought better of it, and that was the right decision. Here's second and ten. Singletary, they'll go up the middle. They showed off a nice juke of the defender before the next wave could bring him down. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. So from second and long, now we go to third and very manageable. Yeah, they love that phrase, don't they? Because as an offensive coordinator, you can keep people a little bit off balance in guessing because you don't have to throw it. You can come back with a strong run game if you want to. And if you're in four down territory, that really opens things up for you. And they pick up the first down there with a gain of four. And they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. Stroud now on first and ten. That's to the veteran. It's Robert Woods. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. A six-yard pickup brings up second and four at the 31-yard line. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Stroud to throw it. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. Well, anytime he reads man coverage, I don't think it's going to be the only time he'll try to hit that route to the outside in this game. He'll test the perimeter, but that time, they are up to the challenge. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Stroud. Yeah, this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. I know this offense was expecting to do big things, but it certainly hasn't turned out that way, at least not through the first three drives. They're definitely going to have to put their heads together and start concocting some offense that will move the ball downfield. On is the punter, Johnston now, as he sends this one away. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. They've got a 7-0 lead in the football as well as they start out first and 10. Jackson from the shotgun. And his throw is going to be incomplete. How about that? Red man coverage and decided to test him early. But it proved up to the task and forced the incompletion. Second and ten. Off the play fake. Here's Jackson. And his throw here is incomplete. They have to like what they've done defensively here at the outset of this drive. They forced a couple of incomplete passes, bring up a third and ten. Don't be surprised to bring a little pressure on this snap. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. To throw is Jackson. And that is incomplete, but a penalty flag coming in. This could be a first down. So pass interference, the call, and that's going to set him up with a first down. And if it's a bang-bang play, maybe the flag stays in the official's pocket, but instead, he definitely impeded the receiver's right to catch the football. The official's letting the players know how the game's going to be called here in the first quarter. From the gun, Jackson. Looking for Aguilar, and it's intercepted. Desmond King picks it, and they take over. They'll set up shop at the 46-yard line. On first down, here's Stroud. He'll get this out wide to Singletary. 
That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And it's second down. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Here's Stroud. Open man is Noah Brown. First connection there of the afternoon for those two, and it's good for a first down. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep. And this is caught inside the five. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. There's the arm strength that we saw in college and during the scouting process. And really, it's not just the arm strength there, but the placement as well. To me, that was an excellent combination of arm talent and accuracy. Now Stroud. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked up by Marcus Williams. And the Ravens are going to get the football here as the ball will come out to the 20. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. Ben, in all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain, considering the blitz that they just had against them. From the 26, they'll line up on second and four. Here's Jackson to throw. Gets this one to Hill. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Well, that was a pretty favorable situation there. What would you call that, second and manageable? Smart play, too. Didn't force it downfield when he didn't have it. Just checked it down, let him get the first down, and that's exactly what he did. Jackson going to give this one to Edwards. And it'll be a minimum pickup here as it will take us to the end of the first quarter. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Baltimore. It's the Ravens in possession. This is second and eight. As they've got it as we resume action. Now Jackson on second down. That is caught with Sean Bateman. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front, defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed. Because you hit a guy on the run like that, you often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Chalk that up as a four-yard loss, and now it's third down. And not a lot of success to be found there. Oh, you got that right, partner, because if you're trying to make guys miss about 10 yards or so downfield, that's a pretty good play. But if you've got to do it in your own backfield, I consider that a problem. That doesn't work too well. And he's going to get this down near the 30-yard line. Lamar Jackson, such a threat with those legs, able to improvise and get the first. There he goes, and for good reason. Running with it has paid dividends earlier in this game and earlier on this drive. And until they prove they can stop him, I don't think he's going to be shy about continuing to run for first downs instead of airing it out. They go play action with Jackson. That's complete left side to Bateman. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Just picking up yardage and bunches here these last few plays. They have moved right down the field, and just like that, they're going to be set up with a first and goal. Edwards. 
will score. Touchdown, Baltimore. And you can forget this defense just a bit here. They know how dangerous Lamar Jackson is running the football. Stopping him is in many ways a prime concern. So here, they're late to react to the handoff on the option, and it costs them as this winds up a touchdown. Tucker with the extra point, and it's now 14 to nothing. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. This taken in right around the goal line. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. Now comes a Houston offense as they get sick over here. And they're in a bind early here, down 14-0. Are you worried at this stage or still too early? You're worried. You're just trying not to transmit it to the rest of your team. You want to make sure that they stay positive but at the same time, you're wondering, how are we going to move the football? What do we have on this play sheet that can work? Get back to basics is usually your answer. And make sure you find the guy who can move the ball fastest for you if you just get it in his hands. And it's still second quarter. You get points on the board here. I think you're feeling okay. So another incompletion there. He's hitting on fewer than half his pass attempts in this one, and that is not a winning formula. Yeah, so let's make sure we give a little bit of credit to the defense here. They've given him a lot to think about, a lot of different looks, and he seems a little bit confused trying to complete passes. Second and 10, Stroud to throw yet again here. And a quick throw there is incomplete. Well, three completions on first and second down. It certainly seems like a reflection of what we've seen so far in this game. The defense, quicker to the punch so far. Let's see if they can get something going here on third down. The Texans on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and 10. Stroud. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Yeah, these are the types of plays we're going to need to hit on if they're going to get back into this game. It hasn't been the greatest of first halves, but this is a nice throw here on third down, and they keep the drive going. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Stroud will look to throw once more. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. That sure looked like a nice call by the defense, and they're very cohesive in their coverage. As soon as he cut inside, they broke on the football and met him as the ball got there and forced the incompletion. Now a second and ten. Stroud looking to throw. And that is incomplete here. Uh, with a rookie quarterback out there, you definitely got to find out how he handles adversity because this one so far hasn't gone according to plan. He's got to fight through it and show him what he's made of. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. They'll run a draw now with Singletary. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. A loss of a yard, and it brings up four. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty. But when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. Now on fourth down, it's Cameron Johnston on to punt it away. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. Fielded just inside the 20. A very good kick there, but 15 yards on the return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Baltimore about ready to go on offense. It's been a good first half so far. They're up 14 to nothing. Points here, they could really put them in command before intermission. Yeah, and it's all well and good what they're seeing and how they're feeling right now. 
But this is the NFL. How many times have we watched 14 and nothing leads evaporate and quickly? Mm. So how do we, have we seen them combat it? Continue to run your offense, but don't back off at all. Don't start looking at the clock. Don't start thinking about, hey, just take care of the football. Keep attacking, usually the best way to maintain control. Yes, sir. How about an out boy there on first down? Got his hand in and knocked it away. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. Running left is Edwards. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk at the 45. It's a pickup on 11 and a Baltimore first down. We often give credit to the O-line there. Two tight end formation. Those tight ends block pretty well also. Yeah, and that's one of the most dynamic positions in football now. The tight ends who can block at the line of scrimmage at the point of attack, and they can also get downfield and catch the football. Now Jackson on first down. Flushed out right. of the first down. Well, we've seen Jackson already have success in the first half running the football, and he gets good yardage on the ground again there. I mean, how... I know it's a $64,000 question, <laughs> CD, but how do they contain him better? You have to win against the blockers ahead of you. If those guys even occupy a defender for even a half a second, then Lamar Jackson is gone. You've got to take those blockers and move them so that you have clear vision of Lamar Jackson, and hopefully you can have him in. So it looks like they still have some fight in them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone. But if this defense gets two more stops, they can keep them out of that area. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Jackson. A dump off now to Hill. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. But at his size, he's a smaller back. He can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit, but can field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are, you know, make him make someone miss in the open field. And they'll lose yardage here. Knocked back to the 19-yard line. This will wind up a loss on the play. And that'll bring up fourth down. Heck of a play there to get to him quickly and get him down for a loss. I think they did a really nice job getting ready for this game, scouting, watching film, and understanding defensively what the play design was. Tucker's kick is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So three points there, and they continue to build this first-half lead. Yeah, every little bit helps. And the more that you can put together drives and start controlling the tempo, controlling possession, finishing with points, the better off you're going to be. Tucker now following the main field goal set to kick it away. Taking it about the one. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. Houston set to take over. And we don't want to call this desperation time, especially in the second quarter, but you're you down. want to. Well, no, but oh, let me finish. Okay, my bad. You're down three scores already. You've done nothing offensively, nothing on the scoreboard. That's that's not a good combination. I think you, just, you, called can a I think you just called a desperation time. I, I think did. you did. But yeah. let's face it, you mentioned this to me in a break earlier in the game. The energy level hasn't been there right from the start. We've noticed that. They've got to find a way to get on their toes and start punching instead of retreating, to use a boxing analogy. When he runs, he seems to do a nice job of knowing when to be patient and find the hole, and then when the hole is there, he goes quickly. You're exactly right. He knows how to just take off. But you know what else? 
Brings a little thump with him, doesn't he? He does. He packs the boom at the end of the run and finishes it going forward. That's what you want to see out of your backs. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. A uh, short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. Call it a gain of six on the play, and now it's third and three. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Stroud out of the gun here, buying time to his left. And Stroud wisely slides down safely after picking up the first down. Opted to run for it. The decision, a good one. Picking up the first, getting 14 yards on the scramble. As we both know, there was a lot that went into why they made him their first-round pick this year. And part of it was what they saw in college, his playmaking ability when things break down. As soon as he saw he wasn't getting a lane to throw, he pivoted and found an alternate way to the marker. And he'll work down inside the 45. All right, so they got that one, Charles, against the center. And let's remember how difficult it is for the center because remember, he's got to snap the ball to put the play in motion. And sometimes you got that big guy on your nose. You got sometimes where he's coming at you at an angle. It's a difficult job for him to snap the ball and then execute his block. Throwing now is Stroud. He'll get this to Devin Singletary out of the backfield. Stroud now on second down. He's going to air it out deep for Woods. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. Early on, the running game's been working well, and the offensive line has been pleased by that. The thought process there, catch those safeties creeping up, trying to help against the running game. They tried to hit them over the top unsuccessfully. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And they get to Stroud, nowhere to go, and he goes down. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Set to punt, here's Cameron Johnston. And a fair catch signaled for and taken just outside the 20 yard line. They call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And out will come the offense as they take over. Throwing on first down, it's Jackson. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Well, he's been the guy already over 100 yards here in the first half. Could have had a lot more if he would have been able to haul that one in. Yeah, in fact, our statistician Marvin was already handing me a piece of paper with that yardage totaled on it. He thought that catch was going to happen just as you and I did as well. Jackson now on second and 10. The connection here with Nelson Aguilar. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. He can only cover for so long. 
So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game at Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. On first and 10, it's Jackson. A short one there, caught by Likely. They'll wind up getting just a yard out of it, and it'll be second down. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Now second and nine. From midfield now, here's Jackson. It's caught by Aguilar. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop him with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. And looking at Houston defensively, they've got a dime set. Six DBs on third. Now it's Jackson. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 26. Nice third down conversion and even 20 yards. Normally on third down and short yardage, you're thinking to throw to your tight end. It's just going to be a simple chain mover. But this time they let him roam down the field, and a nice dart picks up the first down and then some. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. He hit his first, now this from 43. Tucker's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So this lead, Charles, is continuing to swell here in the first half. Well, it's interesting, when we talked to them prior to the game, they told us that their game plan was take no prisoners, and they've lived up to it so far because everything has worked. No guarantee that'll continue, but all in all, this coaching staff's got to be very pleased by what they've seen. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. So we're at halftime here in the Inner Harbor with the hometown Ravens on top. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! The Ravens ready to receive it, and they've got the lead as well as we resume play in the second half. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. Out come the Ravens now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. But Charles, for them, pretty good first half on the ground. They had some success running the ball in quarters one and two, and they've got the lead. Now a chance to expand upon that lead here with their first drive in the third quarter. Yeah, and believe it or not, you and I have noticed that this great game of football has shifted towards pass first one second. So for me, it's really nice to see some of these teams keeping the ground game as a big component of their offense, and it's working pretty well for them now. And let's face it, they can continue to do damage with it. And in addition, it sets up the pass game really well for them, too. From the 32-yard line now, here's second down at a yard. Jackson, options out left. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Call it no gain on the keeper, and it's going to bring up a third down. Well, for that being an option play, there really weren't too many options available for him, were there? No, there weren't, and at least he was able to get back to the line of scrimmage, so they didn't lose anything, but you're exactly right. 
nowhere to go. He'll try and run for the first with Edwards. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. The five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. Well, it wasn't a goal line situation, but how about the goal line formation on third and short? They went in and went heavy. No surprise that it was going to get the football. How about the power exhibited there? Yeah, that was just put a hat on a hat, drive forward. Nice job to pick it up. Jackson on first down. Throw caught by Flowers. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. He's a little trigger happy right there, and it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, any time, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Now Jackson setting up the screen here to Edwards. Room here to run. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 42. Now a pause, and there's an injured Raven in need of some assistance. Now the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. So first and 10, and if they score on this drive, might have to start digging in our second half blowout material. Now a first down carry, it's Hill. Hill shedding the tackle. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive, because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense get a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. On second down, it's Edwards. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. 44 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. They're pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves and start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. Throwing now, Jackson on first down. Finds his man over the middle, it's likely. Such a tough position to defend near the line, even when you add a second defender. But the big man shrugged off the extra body and made the play call a success. Second down and four. They go play action now. Jackson. Now yeah, into the hands of Flowers. Well, that'll be enough to keep the drive moving forward. Another first down and a pickup of five yards. Up the middle, here's Edwards. And he'll get four there, down to about the 12-yard line. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. Second and six. Here's Jackson to throw. This is caught. And they corral him just a couple yards shy of the end zone. Third catch for him on this drive alone, and it'll give him a first down. And I'll tell you what, this offense is playing a little bit of keep away right now. They've come out here in the third quarter, possessed the ball for quite a while, and they keep on converting. Nice pitch and catch there to set up the first and goal. Jackson's going to keep it. And he'll get him. Touchdown, Baltimore. Lamar Jackson 
Scoring on the two-yard keeper. And the Ravens take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. Tucker now for the extra point. And that stretches the lead to 27. That's the score. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. Here's the Texans offense now readying for their first possession of the second half. A CD, they certainly know the hole that they face as they begin the second half. They have to do what precious few teams have done in NFL history. Let's try to come back from a four possession deficit. And, partner, you know as that team gathers, they're saying to each other, you'd never say never, right? Because if you're on an NFL roster, that's how you have to think. You can always come back and win a ball game. And let's face it, we saw a certain Super Bowl, a 25-point lead late that wasn't enough to put someone away. But that being said, this task is near impossible. Let's face it. And bottom line is, it officially becomes impossible if this possession is an empty one. The second down throw now from Stroud. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Schultz. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. 36 yards on the play. And the offense is saying to itself right now, if only they were all this easy because he was wide open. And once he made the catch, plenty of room to work his way downfield. That was a breakdown on the defensive side of the ball, one that they want to fix immediately. They'll run on first down with Singletary. And down inside the 35, he goes to the 32-yard line. 43 yards rushing for him now to this point. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? On second down, here's Pierce. And a good-looking run there as he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18-yard line. And that's on Shaq Mason, the guard. Now they face a second and long following the holding penalty. They go right back to Singletary. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half, to about the 39. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support. And I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. Stroud on third down now. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. They really had a good drive going there, but a nice recovery by the defense these past few downs. Able to knock that one away on third down and bring up what I think for the offense, an unexpected fourth down here. So now on comes the field goal unit, and wow, this is no ordinary try here. And this one is no good. He missed it. And they will remain well, well behind. And anytime you see a kicker trot out to try one for 56 yards, you know everything's got to come off perfectly for it to have a chance. If the laces aren't quite right, if he doesn't hit the fat part of the ball just right, it's unlikely to go through. And that one winds up no good. 
They'll throw on first down with Jackson. He's got the hook up to Odell Beckham. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes and they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. Quick slant there gets him the first down, six yards on the play. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there, keeps the sticks moving. Play action, now Jackson. On target to his man, Likely. And he'll go out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. That'll be marked as a 27-yard pickup. Well, those backups on the sideline, they got to be eagerly anticipating the fourth quarter upcoming. Look at the size of the lead, how they're moving the football. This defense really struggling and giving up plays like we just saw. Yeah, Stars have certainly done all they've needed to in this one, haven't they? But my question is, will we be able to resist the urge to continue to run things up a bit and get his main guys a few bonus stats before he calls them off the field? All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. To throw again is Jackson. This for Beckham. He's got it in the end zone. Touchdown, Ravens. A nine-yard touchdown there. And the Ravens are pouring it on. Well, on the other sideline right now, it's just absolute dejection. But, Charles, let's focus on the positive. With the lead that they've built here, they've done pretty much everything to perfection in this ball game. They certainly have. Makes me think that their week of preparation was excellent. And they flowed into this game, and it carried over. And right now, I don't expect them to back off at all. They're playing so well, they just want to keep it going. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. The return man down to a knee, and this will come out to the 25-yard line. And now out comes Houston. Well, we're still in the third quarter, so there's some time to kind of clean this up and make it look more respectable now. A win, that's probably gone out the window, Charles, but I, I don't know. Do you look at this as a time to just improve and maybe start to look towards the future? I think you have to find something to play for, something to grasp onto until the clock runs out. But Brandon, we've been around this game a long time. This is an outline. You don't get many blowouts like this no matter how the game looks on paper going in. This one has turned out to be everyone's worst nightmare realized. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Stroud will run the option left. And oh, he coughed it up. And it's picked up by the Ravens. There he goes, right side. And he'll take this into the end zone. Now, hold on here. We do have a flag down. So let's see what this is about. So they obviously declined that, and it is a touchdown. They still had the option, but let's face it. There's no option. There's no option when you score a touchdown. An easy call for them. So the defense forces the fumble. They get the score. And a guy on defense becoming offensive there, Charles. And you know they love that. Any guy on defense loves to pick up the ball and have it in his hands and try and score himself. In this case, that's exactly what happened. He'll be singing in the shower post game.
So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he's probably realizing he should have stayed in the end zone as he can only muster a return to the 14-yard line. In this position, trying to get back into the game, teams are looking for a spark from their special teams. That's not what they got, though. They got a setback, and they have a long field to cover if they want to try and put points on the board. Stroud sets up the play action. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there was not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. Well, we're in Baltimore, third quarter action, second and 10. Stroud to throw it. A uh, short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. Stroud working out of the gun, and he's going to lose yardage here. As they will switch ends as time has run out on this third quarter of play. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now in Baltimore. And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter, a very one-sided affair. It's a 40-yard punt, six yards on the return, and the Ravens set up well to begin their drive as it'll begin in enemy territory already. And Baltimore's offense set for this next possession. We paid this offense plenty of compliments already, but I mean, they are deserving as they start another series to be leading by this much with so much time left to play in the fourth. Charles, it's really, really been impressive to watch. It has been, and you have to think to yourself, the preparation that went into this, the absolute focus that they kept throughout in order to have this kind of a result, this is Super Bowl-esque, and they've got to feel awfully good about what they put out there today. Now Jackson on first down. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Well, at this juncture, CD, you normally see teams pack in the passing game. They've got the huge lead. Not them, though. They're still taking their shots. I remember reading in past history, there was a college football coach in the Hall of Fame whose nickname was Close the Gates of Mercy. But he wasn't really big on that. He was big on going ahead and scoring. He's kind of reincarnated right here. We're watching it in front of us. And a hard working run here as he's got it inside the 20, down to the 17. It's a pickup of 11 and a Baltimore first down. Hate to be blunt, but it is just continuing to prove to be the case that this O-line is manhandling this D-line right now. They deserve to roll up their sleeves and show up their biceps because they're doing exactly what you just described, manhandling the defensive front. They've got the leverage, they're powering through, and they're controlling this game. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. Partner in the sportsmanship handbook, there's something to be said for calling the dogs off in a blowout. But these defenders, they also know this is the NFL, and it's their job to stop them, whether they're in the game or they're down by a handful of touchdowns. They go play action with Jackson. Connecting with Kohler on the out route. And able to get this down inside the 15, either the 13 or 14 before he's out of bounds. Well, that was an okay hook up there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's gonna bring up third down. The Ravens on third down. They've been very good, five for seven thus far. 
This will be third and six. Up the middle, it's Edwards. And this won't do it. He needed six. He only got halfway there. But this was just simply excellent defense. On this third down, they had to be alert for the possibility of a pass, but that didn't stop them at all from understanding what was going on when they decided to run the football, and they just swarmed and stopped them for almost no gain. A 27-yard attempt. Tucker's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. Well, ultimately, not really sure that they're going to need those three points, but they'll take the three, and they pad that lead. Yeah, this one's already wrapped up, but you and I both know, if you're an offensive coordinator, you never let up on the gas unless the head coach tells you to do so. And maybe you've actually clicked him off in your headset since you keep calling plays and trying to add to this lead. Tucker now following the main field goal, set to kick it away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. Now comes a Houston offense as they get set to take over here. It's been a tough go for them, it's still without any points here in the fourth quarter. And a big deficit, Charles, but they moved the okay, football ready. on some drives. They just haven't had any points. Yeah, and I know in their minds they're thinking the game plan has actually been working. We just haven't scored points. Well, isn't that the bottom line, partner, to put points on the board? So if you're moving it and you're not scoring, is it really working? Right now, they've got nothing left to lose. They might as well go for broke. And that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall. It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops for one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Throwing now is Stroud. And this will be incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Here's Stroud. Flush to his right. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. Nothing open downfield. He keeps it himself for 11 and a first down. This is where the NFL is headed year by year, partner. A league where just about everyone has someone under center who can get you with their legs as well as their arm. And we've certainly had a nice display of that from both QBs in this game. And that continued with that first down run. Singletary here running out of the gun. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Brandon, we just saw the benefits of being able to run the ball successfully. They pick up four yards on that carry. So now if you're a play caller, you can do just about anything you want, but on the defensive side of the ball, you scramble a little bit. Now you're behind trying to figure out, do I need to blitz him? Do I need to pressure him? How do I gain an advantage on this snap? Meanwhile, Stroud's throw taken in by Collins. A huge play there for Houston. 45 yards. But defensively, I know they have the comfortable lead here in the fourth, but they do not want to give up big plays like that. They want to finish strong. So oftentimes in this situation, you tighten up underneath in your coverage and you bring your safeties back. They can pick up anything that leaks through. But in the meantime, upfield, you're making plays on the football. They'll run out of the gun with Singletary. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. It's a pickup of three. Brings up second and seven. Second and seven. Singletary again. 
And he's going to be down close to a first down at the Ravens' 13-yard line. Call it a gain of five there on the run, but they'll remain a yard or two short here with third down coming up. I think we can safely say that those types of players are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. Stroud now on third and two. We'll swing left side, caught by Collins. And he is going to have a Texans first down by about a yard as they're able to convert on third and two. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And he's going to be taken down, sacked back around the 18 yard line. Patrick Queen picks up his second sack of the afternoon. And you hate to say it with a rookie quarterback. He's done some good things, but overall, looked a little bit overwhelmed back there, hasn't he? He certainly has. But in his defense, he hasn't had a lot of time to throw the football. You like the way I said that? In his defense. In his defense. I got it. Yeah. See what I did there? Yeah. He needs better protection, that's for sure. And they'll lose yardage here. Knocked back to the 19-yard line. Just a one-yard loss that time, but that's not what they needed. Now they're dealing with a third and long. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Houston. Brevin Jordan from 19 yards away. And the Texans are finally on the board here in the fourth quarter. Well, with this rookie QB, we talk a lot about his ball placement and how good he can be at laying it right in there. I think we just saw, Charles, though, the strength of that arm. That was an absolute rifle for the completed touchdown. It absolutely was, and let's face it. You think he was really ready to get that first touchdown? Absolutely. He threw that pass with authority, just as you described. Big-time arm right there, and let's face it. A lot of quarterbacks used to be pitchers in baseball. The fastball was usually their best pitch, and we saw it there. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. Returning it, Justice Hill. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. The Ravens offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. This has really just been a lopsided affair. What a performance they put on, and now they get the football back here with a big lead in the fourth quarter. You know, in the past, we might be discussing dinner plans, talking about steak and sushi, whatever the case is, CD. This ball game is pretty much well in the books. Yeah, we really could have started bringing up dinner a long time ago if we wanted to, partner. And I think a few of the guys out in the field already making plans for the evening. A running play there, going to get 10 and a quick first down. That carries like that, that's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs, clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. The tight end in motion right. They'll go back to Edwards on first down. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Derailing that play from the start was Christian Harris. He got back there and stuck him for a loss behind the line of scrimmage. When this offense gathers to watch the tape, they're going to like a lot of what they saw. They put up big numbers, but they might fast forward through that last play. Oh, there won't be any fast forwarding, partner. I've sat in those sessions before. You end up spending more time on the bad plays than you do on the good ones. It's just the nature of coaches but I know sitting in that room when you've had a big game the night that they've had you don't want to hear that you just want to focus on the good stuff 
After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. On third down, here's Edwards. And he's not going to get anywhere close to the marker as they'll stop him well short of the yellow line. Call it a gain of three, and it'll bring up fourth down. As much as I praise teams for being true to who they are, in this situation, I wonder if maybe they outguessed themselves a little bit. Third down seemed like an obvious passing situation. They chose to run it and then get anywhere close to the first down. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And he'll get credit for putting him inside the 20 as the fair catch is made right at about the 19-yard line. I call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. Back to throw, here's Stroud. Right side complete, that's Woods. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. He'll go down as a gain of six, and that'll bring up second down. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped, and that can turn into an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together, and he catches it and goes over the sideline. A throw over the middle, taken in, and tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Third and one, Stroud. No, he tries to force it in, and it's interrupted. Picked up by Arthur Nolan, and his guys are going to take over at the 31-yard line. Edwards now on first and 10. And a strong run there as he'll maneuver his way down inside the 15. And even 100 yards on the ground so far for Edwards. It's a first down. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. But Charles, a lot of happy faces heading into the tunnel as this one ends, and understandably so. Not only did they get the win, but boy, their offense was on fire in this ball game. And partner, I have no idea what the top speed is on one of those high-end sports cars. What's the top gear you can get into? This offense, they certainly were there in this one, huh? Everything clicking for them in this contest, the kind of performance that they're going to cherish.